Hello folks, welcome to Follow Black Cats. I am here with Pruitt and we are going to play through the brand new alien role playing game from Free League Publishing. <laughs> right? What do you say? May I've made this beautiful overlay for you. And it bears absolutely no like stark things about what's going to happen in today's session whatsoever. I, I think you have me prepared for the end at the beginning. <laughs> A little bit. But as the Smashing Smashing Pumpkin said, the end is the beginning is the end. It's right. The beginning. Yeah. I'm just going to set you up right. Uh, well, you know, you'll see. You'll see. Um, but yeah, I um, the, the Kickstarter just landed and I really wanted to give it a go. Uh, we're, uh, they are launching uh, in retail. So it'll be in your local friendly gaming stores from the uh, 10th of December. That's uh, not too far away now. Just in time for Crimbo. Um Otherwise, uh, you can catch me around the internet with Modifius Entertainment at RPG Webby and on this here channel where we stream on a Thursdays usually for our After the Fire Game of Thrones tabletop game and we'll be doing a few other little bits and bobs too as well. Pruitt, who are you and what do you do on the internet? Uh, well, I'm, I'm Pruitt. Uh, I am one half of WebDM. Uh, we have our uh, D&D tabletop RPG advice videos on Wednesday. We also have a Patreon where we have a weekly podcast. So check us out all that. Uh, we're taking a bit of a holiday hiatus uh, with our with our gaming, but we'll be coming back with some more uh, games on our Twitch channel here pretty soon. And uh, and yeah, so, you know, that's that's pretty much it. I make I make bad puns and uh, pop culture references. It's kind of what it's kind of my shtick. Uh, Jim that's Jim's fun. more of the, uh, you know, longtime DM advice guy. But, uh, you know, that's fair. Also, that's fair. I also like role playing. So, yeah. And you know what? You've got to take a break as well they're important so totally oh, like, enjoy your hiatus oh nice. i have been it's 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 been nice to kind of uh, recoup and recharge the batteries a bit so nice. but uh, i am excited for today uh I've never done like a full one-on-one -on -one session stream before so i uh, i hope that i'm not boring not at all man like i said these are really cool because you can relax a little bit you can chat about the rules a little bit i like fully caveat this with the fact that I have never run this game before. Um, mm -hmm. I've run uh, Things from the Flood, I've run a bit of Tales from the Loop before, so the system works very similarly, but I haven't run this. Um, yeah, yeah. Which does mean that I might be checking rules occasionally, um, all that kind of other stuff. So mm -hmm. just bear with us, folks, um, and uh, I'll, again, like I say, just try my best. Um, I'll just fiddle my audio for just two seconds. Play me out, Johnny. Oh my! Oh my God! You should fiddle with your audio right on stream. All right, chill, chill. Just turning the game down a little bit. It was going a bit. It's going a bit peaky. Um, there we go. All right. Um, I am surrounded by some ridiculous accessories as well. Um, so they brought uh dice out. So uh, as let's maybe go through the game a little bit before we start, so we get the idea. Because I know you've played the the preview that came out with the pre order. Yes, uh, I did survive uh, most of one session. So. <laughs> You may survive most of one session again. We'll see. <laughs> Shooting for seventy five percent here. Woo! Um, but um, they do, as most of their games, rely on d six, and they've got some little custom ones here. Um, so uh, you'll be rolling base dice, which is whatever your attribute and your skill is combined. And then, depending on certain situations that happen or uh, certain stressful things happening, then you'll get some stress dice, which are the yellow ones. Um, you will uh, that will add to your dice rolls, die to your dice pools. They can give you successes too, but they can also give you panic rolls. So if you roll a one on one of those stress die, uh, you you go into panic mode, and mm -hmm. some random things happen to you. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I I fully uh, I'm ready to panic. So. Yeah. Um, the other cool thing that I really dig about the game is the fact that they differentiate their campaign mode with their cinematic mode. So we're playing cinematic mode, which is like fast and loose. Play this NPC like you've stolen a car and you're taking it for a joyride. Um, because it's kind of brutal play is what they uh, anticipate with it. So we're mm -hmm. gonna have like kind of typical movie three-act structure. Uh, we'll be going for around two and a half hours, probably. Not too much longer, if I'm honest. Um, 
one bed to um it kind of favors that cinematic play as well where it's a bit like a movie as well so you know and it is just the two of us so i don't want too much pressure on but both of us to kind of keep the keep the thing going you know we'll be fine we'll yeah be fine. we've got all these lovely people in chat to help us along um and it should be, just be really fun um uh, i don't know if you can see the uh the stream at the moment but on the right hand side of the screen we do have little stress die as well so that will show your uh let me play with that that will show your stress rating i've done it up to seven i don't know if that's as high as it can go or not that seems pretty high it needs to at least go to 11 come on damn it <laughs> really show me up um <laughs> but yeah starting with zero and then uh going up um so i have this scenario that's been percolating in my head for the last few days um or since we created the character as well um it's really helped um and it just plays into all those things i really enjoy uh running which is like a little bit procedural some clues a character coming in finding out what's happened after the fact I love all that stuff in games like Fallout, games like Bioshock. I love that kind of thing. So that is the kind of thing we're going for today. Mm -hmm. um, you already know a little bit uh, about the uh, about the game, about the session. Um, so let's dive in, I think. Uh, oh, I've got also got some tabletop audio. We're going to play you through it. Audio, yeah, because they have a track called Nostromo, Ooh. which is just phenomenal. So if it loads, it does. Is this in roll twenty? Yeah, so you should be able to hear in roll twenty if you got the audio. Uh, let me uh, let me yeah. unmute it. That's cool. <laughs> yes. I approve wholeheartedly. All right, let's jump in. You awaken to a distant, low, piercing shrill, stuck on a loop. As you lift the heavy lids of your eyes, blinking slowly, you see the silver cabin wall in front of you slowly come into focus behind the splatter of deep red blood stained on the window directly in front of your face. The pod you're standing in darkens and brightens again randomly. A bright medical blue that dims again and then slowly fades. A voice beyond the window echoes into the cabin outside the pod, muffled by the seal of the pod itself. Alert. Malfunction in Colony Bay 4. Alert. Your mouth is dry and your thoughts are foggy and slow. What do you do? Um, well, you know, Raymond, uh, he hasn't told anybody this except his, his su supervisor back in uh, ICC headquarters. Uh, this is his first trip into deep space. So this is his first time waking from, from cryo. So it's probably gonna take him a, a minute or two to realize that he's not dreaming. Um, but uh, as actual, like, coherent thought worms its way out of the fog, yeah. um, he immediately, like, starts looking around because he's sure he remembers in that the safety briefing about how to get out of these things. Uh, he starts looking around to fumble for the, for the release. Yeah. Um, There's going to be emergency, like, hatch things somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you scrabble around trying to remember where it is uh, I imagine it's a bit like a, a life jacket on a lot of uh, like mm -hmm. aircraft so reaching kind of between your legs <laughs> yeah, right no. <laughs> reaching, reaching between your legs under um, 
because you're stood up, but there is somewhat of a ledge that kind of that you can support. You can almost kind of sit on, so you can support your upper body. But you are stood in this pod as they're mm-hmm. like, and you can remember now having come into this colony, um, th- this section of the ship, that these are all going to be like racked up, one after the other. Mm-hmm. Um, you finally find the catch. And just as you click it open, you hear the hiss of the door and the seal break. And the light outside flickers. And then you can hear again more clearly now. Alert. Malfunction in Colony Bay 4. Alert. Colony Bay 4. Ugh. And uh, he kind of wipes a little bit more sleep out of the eyes as he pushes the the the, bay, the door mm. all the way up um, and starts looking around for like a you know like a tube like a tube of water or something just yeah um, for sure um, to to finish kind of waking up you're about the the pod is actually suspended about half a meter off the ground so if you're getting out of the pod it's a little jump down into the actual kind of Colony Bay area. Uh, looking around, you can see the other pods. Uh, some of them are smashed, and as you look further along the line, um, you can see that a lot of them have been crumpled up and further further along there, particularly towards the ground. The bulkheads have start, have crumpled in on themselves and have risen up, and you can actually see rock in some parts rock uh, and then a, a dawning slowly real uh, a realization slowly creeps in like what pod is he in again does he remember <laughs> um, so you do remember that you are in bay 4 yeah but the bay uh-huh. the bay is the whole area right right um, but you are in uh, one of the one of the kind of more front pods to be fair as one of the re- like kind of fewer remaining c- civilian kind of staff of what were going to be the colony, you weren't you weren't staff to be manning the ship, but you were you know obviously going to be you were put into kind of into hypersleep. Um, I imagine a fair lot later than most it's kind of mm-hmm. civilians and just families. Um, does Raymond have any of his family or friends with him on the excursion to the colony? I mean, he would be basically starting a new life. Actually, n- no. Um, he uh, he was an only child um, and doesn't have any any attachments. Uh, his 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 mother passed away when he was much younger, and his father mo- more recently passed away, which was one of the reasons why he kind of took this this chance. You know, uh, seeing as how he's never really traveled out of the solar system before. Um, so he he decided to go ahead and just do this. He's solo. Um. Okay. You look behind you to the pod behind you, and even that has been um, smashed about. And leaning on the front of the panel is uh, a bloody face. Um, and you can see as well that actually the splatter that was on your pod has come from several of them as as you look further round now there are bodies lying on the floor okay um okay uh and he um holds back a, a bit of bile and and sure is he is he almost kind of throws up this is beyond anything he's ever experienced sure i want um, you to add a stress dice to your character sheet okay Okay, so so we either crashed or something hit us, but the base not decompressed. Uh, it's as he's now just trying to grasp for any detail yeah. to to kind of maintain his sanity. So he looks up and tries. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go look at the nearest monitor, like computer monitor that he sure. can find. Sure. Um, I will just say as well that coming out of hypersleep like this uh, has made you dehydrated, so I need you to check that as well for me at the moment. Um, 
mechanically speaking, you can't recover health or relieve stress at the moment. Um, every act, you suffer one point of damage and your stress level increases. Um, this all goes away if you drink something. Have I found, since I did say that I one of the first things I did is look for a thing of water? So Yeah, there's no personal effects here okay. um, in the uh, colony bay. Um, that will do that. You'll need to make your way further around the ship. Good. Uh, if you're broken while dehydrated, uh, you must make a death roll after every act. Medical aid has no effect on the death rolls, but uh, you need fluids to save yourself. But like I said, as soon as you drink something, the effect wears off. All right. Well, that is... Uh, as he's looking for the nearest monitor, It's that's mm -hmm. the other thing he is looking for to see if there is anything to drink around here sure um the monitor here is probably going to be more much more civilian oriented mm -hmm. so um flicking through the files it will have some kind of propaganda videos on building new uh, better worlds um or kind of adverts infomercials um mm -hmm. it will have like an interactive FAQ on what this new colony might be. And it's all very, like, you know, smooth lawns next to rivers, yeah. beautiful bridges, families playing. It's all lovely. Clear blue skies, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, he'll... You know, he's he is a company man, but not not this company, uh, being part of the ICC. So he, he kind of waits, th waits through it to try to get to a screen where he can actually, like interact with something other than just being fed propaganda um sure yeah um there is a um uh door in front of you uh colony bay four is actually one of the um four colony bays rather than the aft colony bays um there are uh, six larger kind of hexagonal containers split amongst the ship. Uh, if you saw Covenant, then this is the, the same kind of ship. Yeah. And then you've got the front command module. Mm -hmm. um, so you're actually, having been a company man, quite close to that because you've been doing some routine inspection stuff and just checking over paperwork before entering hypersleep after everybody else. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I will. I will definitely head to the command. Uh, the command deck. Cool. Um, you head towards the, the door uh, in front of you and it's uh, more, it's uh, obviously like a sealed airlock style door. There's a little hexagonal window in front of you and you mm -hmm. look down and you can see a very lengthy narrow circular corridor almost a kind of black tubing on the um, walls of it and the lights in there are very dim there's one you can actually see one emergency light just a red one just rotating just slowly round and you scrabble for a kind of access panel um, mm -hmm. click onto one of the um, panels that's the kind of touch sensitive operation touch screen um, and then mother come on, uh, comes online and says Civilian access to the command module is denied. Uh, 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 mother, uh, uh, I, my name's Raymond Cross. Uh, what, what happened? What, the ship? What, what, what's wrong with it? Raymond, there has been an accident. Okay, um, understatement of the century. Wh what happened to the ship in the accident? Where did we crash? Did something hit us? That information has been locked down on authority of Captain Arnold. Can I is Captain Arnold here? Can I can I talk to them? That information is on lockdown on authority 
of Captain Arnold. What the hell? What parts of the ship do I have access to at this moment? From where I am? You are in Colony Bay 4. Thank you for reminding me. Civilian access has been locked down to the colony bays. Are the, is there damage to the other colony bays? I can confirm there is damage to the other colony bays, Raymond. Okay. Um, where's the where's the nearest colony bay? And, and, and how do I access it? Colony Bay 3 is above you. Colony Bays 1 and 2 are adjacent to 3 and 4. And, and, and the nearest access port? To where, Raymond? To, to Colony Bay 3. The access ladder is to your right, three meters ahead. Can you get a message to Captain Arnold? I cannot. Okay. Um, okay. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, when you're in a crash, you want to completely cut yourself off from any point. Uh, is there anybody, can you tell if there's anybody else alive in this bay? You are the only person alive, Raymond. In, I'm sorry. In this, it, in this bay, or what about the other bays? There are other survivors in the other colony bays. Aha, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Uh, 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 which, where? Which ones? What bay has the... Cl uh, sorry. I'm sorry, Raymond. Please repeat your request. Does Colony... Which bays have survivors? Let's start there. Colony bays three... And one have been the most protected from impact. All right, so three it is. Uh, and he kind of looks to the right. Yep. Um, uh, so, Mother, can you stay with me? As I, I'm going to go to Colony Bay Three. Um, is there like a emergency pack? I'm really thirsty. Um, emergency. Rationing is in the med bay. I shudder to hear the answer to this, but do I have access to the med bay? The med bay is located next to the galley in the command module. Awesome. Thanks. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get back with you. And uh, Ray begins to head towards that ladder. Sure. Uh, it's a short um, climb up to actually leave the the bay you're in, mm -hmm. um, and it takes a moment or two to like find the kind of manual access to like pump the hatch doors open. Um, but you manage to do that, and pushing the hatch open, you look up to a completely dark ladder access probably only about four or five foot wide mm -hmm. uh, just that one ladder that you're on but this is like the like the access tunnel yeah between bays yeah <clears throat> M mother yes Raymond is the is the lighting out in this access tunnel? Yes.
Yes, I'm sorry. And is the lighting out in Colony Bay 3 also? Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Hmm. I suppose the emergency flashlights are on the command deck. The inventory for the colony bay that you're in does have some rudimentary equipment. Tortures are okay. on the manifest. Okay. Well, there. Then, thank you. Would uh, would let's. Can you can you lead me to that before I move forward? I don't want to. I want to uh, run into anything in the dark. Um, I might stub a toe. <laughs> <sighs> According to Sorry. the ship's inventory, the emergency packs are at the rear of the bay. And he kind of like looks back because you said I was at the front of the bay. Yeah. 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 I kind of like look down like the gangplank like, OK, all right, let's 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 do that first. Um, and uh, so, yeah, Raymond's going to climb back down the ladder and and, and start heading towards the back. Of the uh, the bay, trying to focus on, you know, like the ten feet in front of him, and not look at the carnage that is surrounding him. Yeah, uh, a couple of times there's just you glance up and you can't help mm -hmm. but see the the faces pressed upon the glass that have been smashed, and there's the kind of mm -hmm. uh, chink circular spider's web almost on there. There's a couple of. Um, pods that have just fallen completely off or have been crushed on top of each other and there are legs poking out in different angles oh okay oh god damn it Ray next time just write a memo um okay yeah and uh just gonna keep walking towards the back sure by the time you get to the back there uh you do find uh like it's it's a bit battered uh, but you will find a kind of emergency uh, pack type thing. Um, there is a torch in there. Anything else particularly that you'd be looking for? Uh, well, I mean, you know, he sees emergency pack, so he's just going to kind of rifle through it and just see if there is anything useful. He's still hoping for like a small little ration of water somewhere. Uh, sure. But... Uh, let me have a look at the fancy little rule book. Um, so... Vision devices, I don't think. Um, there is a maintenance jack in here, uh, which you can add to your sheet. The maintenance jack is a common tool used to open unpowered airlocks and divert power to or from electrical juncture boxes. Uh, it's going to give you pro a plus one to heavy machinery in relevant situations. Okay, cool. Um, there is a personal med kit as well. That contains everything you need to stop bleeding, disinfect a wound, and cauterize it. Okay. Some Pharmax bandages to wrap it up, and a stim boost to keep you on your feet. Medkit is not a permanent solution. It's more of a band-aid to keep your guts from spilling out until you reach an auto dock. It gives you a plus two modification to medical aid rolls, but can only be used once. All right. A little epinephrine, a little triple antibiotic ointment. Got it. Yeah, it's my life. <laughs> <laughs> Um. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll go ahead and. I assume it's in some kind of bag or or something. So he'll, you know, basically try to. Hopefully, like it's got long enough straps that he can kind of just strap it over his shoulders and uh, get the flashlight out. Um, you know, like tuck it in his front pocket and, and start making his way back towards that ladder to to go to uh, bay three. Sure. I'm always an advocate for saying in games like this that you can always just like take a second and take a break. I just want to say, like, I'm so into this already. 
Oh no, I'm, I'm so like, I'm, just I'm locked in. Oh, this is great. <laughs> right, okay. So he's worked his way from the back of the colony bay back towards the ladder, mm-hmm. and you're working your way up now again, just shining that light up just to see mm-hmm. what's up there, and it's a heck of a long way up. Probably. Uh, 40 feet, gotta be, at least. I'm trying to think of the scale of the ship a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I, I'd say that's pretty pretty short, but 40 feet sounds good. Cool. Uh-huh. All right. Um, I think I will call for a test here. All right. Uh, just see how the bones roll for you today. Um, so, yeah, we are basically looking for a six, um, and... This will be... Let me just check this sheet. Mobility, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you said uh, dehydrated. Is that uh, doing this test? It's, I'm going to take one point of stress from it. Uh, so you will add a... So I think if you've already clicked your little stress die uh, on the character sheet, it'll factor it in. It gives you an extra dice to roll. The little yellow dots... Um. Oh. Okay. Well, I clicked one now. Um. Okay. Let's have a quick look on you for you. Yeah. It was. It was That's not it. lit up. I just clicked it and turned it on. There you go. Uh, That's it. Okay. Cool. Alrighty. So that will give you an extra die to roll. All right. All right. So we're good. All right. So I successfully climbed the ladder. Yeah. <laughs> well. So look, you've got this bag. You've got this torch. You're kind of like. Nothing falls down. You don't miss. Mm-hmm. You don't take a misstep. You manage to get to the top and crank again the handle for the manual release of the hatch. And you prise open the hatch and slam. This bloodied face slaps. It's like, like, like kind of not almost crawls, but like kind of slides down just just by you. You have to grip onto the ladder as it flops and slaps its way down the uh, access tunnel. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And after like what seems like a year, but probably is about 30 seconds, uh, Ray will finally like open his eyes again and like shine the flashlight back up. Um and just make sure that there's nothing else. Um, It's gonna be the same as the last bay. It's gonna be the same. Oh God. And he bites back a bit of revulsion again. Um, But he, um, go ahead and not look back down where the body fell and uh, go ahead and try to climb out of this, this access tunnel. Yeah. So you, move your body up onto the floor of this bay and then probably with quite a bit of trepidation like shine the torch around <laughs> just giving it a look the bays nearest this access tunnel are the ones that are the most um, wrecked, ruined but it's more because of the impact the potential impact that's happened to the ship mm-hmm. um, rather than the underside of the ship having caught that, uh, whatever it is, that rock, the rock, the rock you saw on on your bottom colony bay. So you're you're in two bays below. You were that's the one you're in, and then above is the one you're in now. Mm-hmm. So they've all landed on top of each other, all mangled as machinery has kind of been cracked out the walls, bits of hull and paneling and stuff. Um. But you take a look around. There are some pods that are still lit up, just just ebbing, glowing slightly, just dimming occasionally as that kind of blue light that surrounded you when you first woke up. And there's, mm-hmm. there's a few of those, say, of the... Well, you would know this from your uh, inspections, your logs from the ship and stuff like that. There's the po- each bay of the, this is going to house about 150 people. And of these, probably a handful are lit up. Okay. Okay. Um, question, though. 
how accessible are they? Like I said, the pods are all like uh, half a meter off the ground. Yeah. It's a couple of feet off the ground. Um, so you could... They're quite big too because they have, they, you know, have to fit, have to house people. Mm-hmm. So I just mean, but the walkways to get to them aren't obstructed since there's so much destruction and kind of climbing. No, you can climb around, you can get around. Okay. It's not going to be a massive bother. Okay. Um... <clears throat> Okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, you know, Misery loves company, so uh, Ray is going to go to the next pod, that, or the closest pod he can see, mm-hmm. um, and at least try to, you know, if there's like a readout of who it is. Um, I, I mean, quite honestly, I'm looking for someone who actually is a crew of the ship. That can possibly like help out. That's that's who I'm looking for first. Sure. If there's someone. Okay. That's just not a colonist. Yeah. Uh, the first pod you come to, you have to like almost kind of climb up onto the side of the plating a little bit, and to kind of like hover up because it's actually a fairly young kid, probably about six mm-hmm. years old. Okay. Uh, a, yeah. a young boy, kind of yeah. like stupid bowl cut hair and uh, clutching a toy, cuddly toy. For the sake of you know, movie logic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we'll just leave him uh, content right now. <clears throat> he doesn't need to see this. Uh, now, uh, go ahead and move on to the next pod. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a few, few more pods down, a few more families down. Um, but there is a kind of uh, an older guy, um, dark brown skin. Balding, uh, but with a white stubbly beard, uh, medium build. Um, mm-hmm. And his his pod is kind of like that dim light that's kind of fading and ebbing. And... That can't, be, yeah, that can't be good. Um, well, why the hell not? Uh, and uh, you know. Raymond doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He, so he just goes to the exterior looking for like a, a control panel, hoping it just says, you know, like eject or open or, you know, like you give him a spreadsheet and he will find any discrepancy that is on it. But this is a little bit more scientific than he's used to. Sure. You're like, uh, you're searching around for a little while. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you hear. Raymond, access to the colonists is, you do not have clearance to access the colonists. Mother, can you, can you give me clearance? I mean, like these, there's only like three people alive in here. Everybody's just, everybody's just fucking dead. So what what am I supposed to do? Just leave them? It is best to leave the colonists where they are. But maybe he could help. I don't know. Like, besides, the, the what's the power situation? The, the light, it's fading. Like, is, is it, I mean. As per mission parameters, the colonists are on lockdown until we have assistance. Let me guess, that was Captain Arnold? It is protocol. Yeah, protocol. Well, I'm constructing a very strongly worded email in my head right now. Um, So, you look forward to that in your next systems review. Um, I could take that down for you. No, it's okay. I, I like to... I like to think about it first before I actually like do a first draft. It's just my creative process. Um, so if I, if I can't access the colonists and I can't access the command deck where the med bay and the galley is where there's food and water, what, what do I have access to? If you don't mind me asking.
you have access to Colony Bay 4. You know, I do have access to Colony Bay 4. As Raymond remembers, like, the rock protruding from the bottom side of it. And he's just like, hmm. I wonder if there's access out of Colony Bay 4. Thank you, Mother. You've been so helpful. Really. You really have. Um, and, uh, yeah, Raymond's going to um, kind of take a step away from this pod and, like, give it one last look back and... Shit. And, and kind of shake it off. Uh, but he's going to head back to the that access pan- tunnel mm-hmm. and um, prepare himself for what's at the bottom. Uh, being whoever that was that decided to fall past him. Um, but take extra care uh, heading down because now there's probably blood all over the ladder. So um, that'll be fun. But yeah, I will... Uh, going to go ahead and head back down because basically Raymond is thinking, well, if if we crashed on a planet and there's rock protruding through, perhaps there's a hole that he can get out of. And if there's a hole here, there might be a hole in another part of the ship. And maybe I can get there that way. I mean, you know, we're obviously not decompressed and I'm still breathing, so it can't be much worse outside than it is in. And he kind of steals himself with that, mm. like, um, yeah. to, and makes his way back to Bay 4. Yeah, so now back in Bay 4, you head towards the back of the chamber again, and you can see that the rock has formed a pretty tight um, kind of uh, impact. <laughs> um, so that you can't access the outside of the ship, but the inner walls, the inner flooring... Mm-hmm. has been broken up so that you could actually essentially kind of like c- crawl between that and the actual hull. Right, right. Um, essentially between the walls. Right, okay. Well, um, it's same difference. Maybe it's, maybe, maybe, maybe the walls breached in the command area. Um, Shit, uh, and he kind of like he doesn't. He's not claustrophobic, but he would prefer more space <laughs> than is down there. <laughs> and so he he kind of shines a flashlight both ways, and well, um, <clears throat> and he like thinks about it for a second, and he's just like, mother. I know that I don't have access to the command deck. Can you at least tell me how damaged the command deck is? The command module is relatively intact. What about the access tunnels to and from the command module? You know, from the colony base. You do not have access to those tunnels. Well, I I understand that. I just, I'm asking about the relative damage I'm not asking for access there is some is. there is some damage to the paneling oh that's that's unfortunate um, it's probably gonna keep this ship in dry dock a little bit longer uh, thank you mother and he kind of pops down in the hole uh, <laughs> and starts heading towards what he thinks I mean he's he's been in the sh- in the ship back and forth you know in the tunnels, but now he's trying to think like kind of a circuitous route, but you know, heading that way. Could you make me a I'm trying to think like this is going to be empathy, but I don't think you can actually click the individual attributes. Yeah, okay. You can. Oh, you mean you talking about just empathy? Yeah. I mean, I could just roll a command. It's like something I don't have a rank in. That works. All right. Nope. Oh, wait. I got that one stress, on my stress die. That stress die gave you the focus you needed to, like, steal it. So, yeah, you're totally right. There's, like, the claustrophobia in here. Like, you'd like it to be 
bigger, mm-hmm. but at some parts it's literally a, a like you are pushing yourself through gaps that are just as wide as your head, your shoulders, that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, John McClane in the uh, air ducts. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> but you <laughs> just come out to the colony. We'll have some laughs. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But you do eventually see that flickering, pulsing red light mm-hmm. bouncing off the internal crawl space that you found here. Uh, ah, and he starts heading towards that. Okay. As you emerge from the gap, you emerge on the other side of the door that was blocking you from coming towards the command module. And as you look down much further now, the corridor that's only, like I say, a couple of meters wide, uh, you can see the door is half open to the command module. Okay, okay. He silently congratulates himself, but he doesn't say anything out loud because <laughs> he doesn't want to tip Mother off. And and so he, he kind of extricates himself from this crawl space. Um, takes a deep breath and kind of shines a flashlight both ways and uh, starts heading towards the, the, the actual command deck. Sure. As you come up on the uh, door, uh, you can see that it's powered down. Mm-hmm. Um, you can just squeeze through if you wanted to. But on the other side, uh, The lights are on intermittently, Mm -hmm. Um, so there's not a good amount of lighting here, but it just uh, spotlights certain areas. Um, And having had a tour of the ship, um, you'll know this is the galley. Uh, The galley basically will kind of allow access to most things, uh, basically towards everything more or less in the command module, from the engineering decks below to the kind of command the actual kind of the bridge at the front, um, med bay, crew quarters, mm-hmm. all that kind of thing. Yeah, his um, his mouth starts to cramp because normally it would be watering. Thinking about the the galley, but since he has no extra hydration, it just kind of hurts. Um, but he immediately, like maybe a little bit more, um, you know, insistent than he should. But he kind of scrambles over to where he knows that. Like the rations or you know water and everything is kept, uh, sure. And he kind of yeah, that's his first. Like he just kind of beelines it. All right, as you beeline it towards the center of the kind of big galley area with different corridors uh, leading off in different diagonal places, um, you suddenly hear Mother's voice say, "Raymond, you do not have access to the command module." I uh, I'm not in the. Uh... I, d- I understand that I don't have access, and uh, I promise not to touch anything. I don't have to. And he continues to move towards. Sure. To ch- he like all he can think of is I have to get something to drink, so yeah. that I can quench this desert that is currently my mouth. Sure. As you stumble towards the actual center of the galley area, towards the little kind of kitchen mess hall little area, um, you stumble upon something that's clearly happened here. There are bloodstains on the floor, drag marks, splatters on the on the wall, on the tables, uh, as well as dinner trays, cups, and cutlery all over the floor. God. But no, right in the middle. but what? no people. Um, and that's probably what starts to like the bulb that starts to light up like before you know it's a crash he's had to run the numbers on crashes before and he's thought about you know oh that it would probably be pretty terrible to be in but it was a crash um and now to see this there's no bodies maybe 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 the cap maybe they just uh maybe they just put them somewhere um uh, and he, more because he wants to not think about it, he he tries to put himself back on the mission to get some water. Um, 
and just like got up. It's they, yeah, they probably just police the bodies. That's they can't leave them around. It's they're in the way. It's it's fine. They can't look at it. I don't want to look at it. Uh, mother, where's the water? You can dock my pay. Where's the water? <clears throat> you should try the cabinets, Raymond. It's very like kitchen cabinets at high yeah. level all over. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and he goes over and kind of slides the, the doors up and starts just going through them until he finds the sweet elixir of life. Yeah, I can imagine uh, lots of like silvery space food packets like falling over and like mm-hmm. tins of stuff just being like thrown onto the floor and stuff as you eventually find some like cans of um, company water mm-hmm. um, that are notoriously like recycled like slightly foggy have a metallic taste to them Mm -hmm. yep drinking everyone's piss over and over again he just kind of he downs the first one like even in the back of his mind he knows he's not supposed to but he does uh until he just like retches uh and and then he calms down and takes a drink holds it in his mouth swallows it Mm. he did he did a survival weekend once he he's starting to remember slowly takes another drink holds it in his mouth then he swallows it you know until he finally um you know gets one of these down of, over you know a, a few minutes yeah yeah, yeah sure <clears throat> so cool you uh so you can you can take off the dehydrated condition um so kind of taking a rest uh, as a kind of slow action um mm-hmm. will at least alleviate some stress um, one of the other things that you can do in cinematic mode is with your signature item, if you kind of have a moment, if you rest and kind of you know, use your signature item in some way, just to reflect mm-hmm. on it or anything like that, then you can take away a, a, a stress die. Yeah, he'll 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 pull out his um, his father's pocket watch that he gave him, um, and you know he'll 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 pop it open and look at it. He's got a picture of him and his dad. You know it a vacation or they're out kayaking or something something very naturey um and you know just kind of reflects on that and just um well dad you always said i needed to get out there here i am so thanks for that and just kind of laughs at his own macabre joke about that yeah. but um he then you know kind of clutches it and takes a breath and kind of puts it back in his pocket and uh he'll take some some like rations and uh you know some more water and kind of put it in his that little bag yeah uh with all of his other stuff and um <clears throat> okay so there's nobody's here maybe uh No, no, no. We'll go to the go to the command deck. Yeah, and he's 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 kind of made up his mind. He was thinking about going to the med bay just to see if there's anybody there, uh, but he wants to find out like what's going on with the ship itself. Um, and so, heading for the the actual heading for the con. Cool. Okay, you head straight up towards the bridge. There's a short corridor here from the galley up towards the, the actual command deck. Um, and the door here is sealed. Mm-hmm. Um, but you do have that tool. And uh, it's it, there's no there's no power to the door. Um, no. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, and he kind of pulls this this like maintenance jack out. He like looks for instructions on the side. He's uh, like, uh, uh, and he kind of fits it how he thinks it's supposed to go. Sure. And and uh, he'll he'll try to go ahead and wrench that open. Okay. Heavy machinery, please. Uh, let's see. So I'm just gonna roll. And you've got... Since that gives me a plus one, I'm just gonna roll stamina since I have a one in that. Cool. Oh. Ooh. I think you've succeeded every roll so far. Nice. Okay. Although, take that stress die off your sheet from now on. 
Oh right, 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 because I did relax. Cool. Sorry. Alright. I did it really smoothly in the in the in the overlay and I forgot to tell you. Oh yeah, yeah. No worries. It's alright. Cool. Okay. So you do it it's a bit like uh changing a tire. It's like it's really, really fucking stiff to begin with, and then it mm -hmm. just starts to give. Um and the door almost with a little crunch, just like and then you can like slowly push it okay. inside. So yeah, after after wrenching that open, um, start you know I still have the flashlight out, mm. um, and uh, you know see if there's any systems that are even on. Yeah, yeah. First and foremost is just looking for that. Yeah, there are, yeah there are displays that are on, um, mm -hmm. in the kind of dim light here. Um, okay. Yeah. And yeah, I'm just looking for either. First thing I'm looking for is anything that will show like the damage to the ship, um, and then looking for the like the comms. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of damage reporting, yeah, you can certainly check out the engineering kind of deck uh, desk um, to check that out. Um, it is, it is. Uh, they've all basically, essentially, I think, kind of been like logged out. Um, so they are asking for a, like, uh, user authentication, just password, kind of username type stuff. Mm hmm. Um, in my, okay. Uh, he, he feels a little bad about this, but in my time here, uh, me and the pilot got along pretty well. Um, and, uh, I was up there a lot on the bridge with, uh, with old Stackman. Um, did I ever happen to overlook his input of his user ID and password? I think so, yeah. Yeah. He, like, will have had it on, like, a little post-it note. Like, slams <laughs> just, just stuck to the front of the, of the con. So, like, I can imagine, actually, that you'd go up to, like, his desk and just be like, <laughs> yeah, here it is. It's, like, it's half hanging off now but mm -hmm. there's still the little post-it with the with the numbers scribbled on and yeah like a couple of other versions before that above it like scratched out as the passwords have been changed over the last few uh -huh. weeks yeah the six to the seven yeah because like because you can yeah. never remember the new fucking password man uh -huh. okay uh yeah well then i'll just yeah i'll go up and just be like oh god i hope hope you're left somewhere here buddy and help I'll, I'll put that in cool uh, all right, it logs you in. Um, what kind of information do you want as a first thing? And then what I think we'll do is roll a uh, Comtech test. Yeah. Um, and each uh, each actual success could net you like a specific question for me. Okay. Um, okay. Well. Uh rolling seven dice here. It's the big one. <laughs> Alright. So, All right. well, let's just check some of these because when you roll more than the one success you, you need invariably, because yeah. um, the any modifications to the roll making it like easier or harder actually add to your dice pool. They don't, add, they don't increase the, the actual difficulty you need. So a six is a success, but because you've got two extra ones, you could do some stunts. So let me check the Comtech stunts for you, and we'll see what we could do. Uh, so this is programming, mainframes, other kind of specialist knowledge. So you're using your know-how of this operating system mm -hmm. to get the details you need. Uh, for each extra success you rolled, choose one of the stunt applicable to the situation. So you could gain a plus one dice to a later skill roll that's related to this one. Um, oh, okay. The other stunt you could have is uh, you don't need to roll to overcome the exact same challenge in the future. So basically okay, now, well, like, you could just be like, I'll have root access, please, to everything. And now computers just tell you what you want. 
Uh, you can do it half the time you want, uh, or you can get new or unexpected information from uh, from me, uh, or you hide your tracks, or you show off. I don't know who to, but you could show off. Yeah, no, it's, uh, he sh he showed off once, and now he's been now he was put on a colony ship. So that's <laughs> it's he's learning the lesson of, of pride goeth going before the fall. Um, so pretty much, I mean, the, the first thing I wanted to look up is, is a kind of a damage report and kind of a layout of the ship itself. So I can see, you know, that stunt basically being like, you know, he knows which parts are damaged, what, you know, what actual access hatches are broken versus blah, blah, blah. You know, the basic layout of the ship. I mean, he already knows the layout of the ship, but uh, at least what he, what he can get to. Does that sound good? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's really the first four colony bays that are accessible. Um, so the one that you're in, number three, uh, oh, sorry, number four, number three above you, and then one and two adjacent to you. But the mm -hmm. aft of that is just like, it's gone. The entire aft of the ship is just gone? It's pretty wrecked, yeah. And, I mean, like, he's on the bridge now, like, is there is a, like, a, a view screen or, like, a the front it's from from windshield mate yeah um so like where are we <laughs> um you're essentially on an incredibly barren gray rocky landscape um stuck nestled on the edge of this mountain range and now that you've got the horizon level to you now that you you kind of understand this weird kind of unbalanced feeling you've had because the ship is essentially just a little bit like that uh -huh. just a little bit off um, the horizon looks like night time or it could be that there's maybe no atmosphere outside or maybe a, just a very thin one hmm. okay so I'm very lucky right now um Okay. Well then. <clears throat> huh. Um All right. And he's he, he's actually going to start crunching the numbers uh and and see if if he can find out if there's been any access like like kind of a timeline like, you know, when obviously when the alarm started going off like when the wreck happened has there been any computer access after that you know that kind of thing yeah yeah for sure um those files um yeah are essentially on like a kind of lockdown hmm. personal lockdown someone's got in manually and uh, stop the access to, to these. Yeah, they're trying to cover up the wreck. Goddamn drunken captains. Um, but in okay. terms of other damage to the ship, um, the main fusion reactor um, is on the fritz down below in the engineering deck. They call oh. it a fusion reactor, but it is uh, the the deck is essentially irradiated underneath you. Oh. Okay. Um is, um. is there any like? Can I tell if there's any of that like leaking through? Are there any? They have alarms on these ships for this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, checking the checking the systems information, the kind of diagnostics. Mm -hmm. um, the, the the bulkheads between the decks are definitely saving you from that radiation. It's not it's not immediately lethal, but uh, it is a lethal dose essentially. Um, the other strange report is that the life support deck that's adjacent to the engineering deck is measuring about five 
no, sorry, let's say like 15 odd degrees hotter than the rest of the ship. Okay. I'm sure that's I'm sure that's I'm sure there's nothing wrong with that. But um, systems are functioning fairly okay. Like they're not peak performance obviously, but life support's holding up. Well, small victories. Um, okay, well... Info's locked down. I have to start looking around. Um, Alright, well, last thing uh, is see if any kind of comms, like checking comms anything, like any kind of signal going out. Was there a distress beacon activated? Uh, yes. Yeah, there was. Um, so they initiated the the crew, uh, initiated a um, distress call, um, and then you do also get a second uh, faint signal. That's navigation wise very close. Um, it's essentially in the same. It's it's just just outside the the system. Uh, well, no, let's think actually. So it's it's heading towards the outer outer reaches of the of this solar system, uh, and it essentially is a, a another message, another distress call. Wait, so there's this distress call from this ship, and then there's one from a ship at the edge of the solar system? Yep. Hmm. And you said it's heading out? Yep. Interesting. Well, obviously this is not a good system to be in. Um, can I tell, like, where in our travels we are on to the heading to the colony? Like in route, like. Uh, yeah. So, um, it, checking the logs in terms of the trajectory of the of the ship, um, and also the FTL course. Um, but essentially, this is a miscalculation, and the FTL uh, navigation um, would have put this ship essentially straight through the gas giant that uh, is on the other side of the horizon currently so it's it's you can't see it at the moment um, but as you check out the navigation you are essentially on a moon hmm. orbiting a uh, like Jovian style cast giant, yeah. Um, and the ship would have, if it, if Mother had not essentially, like, tried to perform an emergency stop, the ship would have gone straight th uh, FTL straight through the gas giant. Awesome. That's well. Um. Thank thanks for trying to save the ship, Mother. You know, you really, uh, you know, there needs to be like an in-service or something on inputting navigation coordinates because it seems to be a pretty basic thing that you want to get right. But I guess we'll save that for for later. Um, Probability can I... of crashing based on my navigational calculations is 3,720 to 1. Listen, Mother, please never tell me the odds, okay? Um just just not now um and then i'm gonna actually try to get like on the comm and like try to send out a message um if i can sure uh i tell you what um roll me another com tech unless there is a 
more applicable skill. No, I think uh, I think Comtap is. Uh... Yeah. Uh, but this is a wits-based skill, so I have cunning. So I'm yeah. gonna try to push this. That doesn't cost stress. Is that what the cunning thing is? Yeah, cunning. I uh, can push any skill roll based on wits twice. Each push increases stress one. So yeah, like I'm trying to get access to the comms, and it's just not, it's just not working, and getting a little frustrated, and you know maybe just hammer the <laughs> hammer the control panel a bit um so do i get the stress for the this role or after this role i have I one literally stress about to ask this <laughs> i was like hmm um rolling dice let's check this out pushing rolls this means you grab the dice that didn't show a success and you roll them again and the uh, you get a new chance to roll a success. So no, it doesn't. The stress doesn't apply to the to the to the roll you push. It applies to rolls after. Okay, so I push this, then I get a stress. Yeah. Okay. Usually you can do it only once, but cunning lets you do it twice. Gotcha. Uh, well, then I'm gonna go ahead and push this roll and so give just it another go. Reroll all of them. Yeah. Oh. Two. And give me a stress. There we are. All right. Uh, so yeah, after after basically. One thing he learned when he was young with technology, if it doesn't work right the first time, you restart it. If it doesn't work right the second time, you just hit it really hard. And uh, and so, yeah, he kind of like uh, curses and like hits the control panel and, yeah, it, yeah. and maybe gives him a, an open channel. Um, uh, uh, to, to, to any ships in, if you can hear my voice, I don't know where we are. Uh, um, Oh, by the way, what was the name of the ship that I'm on? Uh, the Dimos. The Dimos. Uh, my name is Raymond Cross. I'm I'm a, a regulatory agent with the ICC, and we have crashed on a moon around a gas giant. Please send any and all help to the source of this signal. And I just realized the futility of what I'm doing right now. <sighs> Please send help. You do have a stunt as well, if you want to activate one. Um. Yeah. Um. I basically want to try to keep this comm link open. Sure. And and just just like send out like whatever signal I am and like keeping the comm link open so that should a response come back, hmm. uh, it like it pings me wherever I because I, I I gotta I need to look around um, I need to see if somebody else is alive I need to find Captain Arnold slap him out of whatever drunken stupor he's in is it a he or she by the way. Uh, Captain Arnold. She. So she. Um, I'll give you a little peek at the crew roster as well. So that should be in your old twenty. Okay. All right. So Lachey Arnold's captain. Brandon Paul is the EXO and chief science officer. Uh, Sven Stackman is your mate, the pilot. Mm -hmm. uh, Andre Bick is the dropship pilot. Uh, Opinda Kanj is the chief security officer um, and then we've got various security officers there as well mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Katie Abley chief medical Ugh. Ugh. Uh, Dr. Chelsea yeah. Stone is the chief terraformist uh, Logan Ward is biologist Esme Scott is a navigator and Alberto Sons is the communications technician Right. Well, I've been putting off going to the med bay, because um, me and Doctor Ab Abley doesn't don't get along. But whatever, <clears throat> it's fine. She thinks I'm a hypochondriac. Whatever. It's my first time in space. I know what's wrong with my body. Anyway, 
so yeah, uh, I'm going to try to keep that comm link open uh, and, and broadcasting. And um, or I, I say this, can I... No, nah, I'll just leave that. Um, yeah, just try to leave it open. Um, and uh, make my way to the med bay. Sure. Against my better judgment. All right. You... Yeah. She, she did threaten that the next time she saw me in the med bay, she was going to give me a reason to be there. Um, so this could go bad for me. You make your way slowly to the med bay skirting around the, the galley so you don't have to go through the blood-stained kitchen diner thing again. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as kind of diamond formation as you go around the side, to the right-hand side, you finally turn right, uh, turn left, sorry, into the med bay. And looking inside... There's a couple of lights on. There's just the one fluorescent kind of tube style lighting above, uh, like a mirror or a display board on the right, left hand side. Um, and there is an auto dock. There's kind of a few displays that are just flickering. Um, and one of the curtains has been pulled around one of the beds for privacy. Um, so yeah, uh, Raymond will kind of shine the flashlight around, uh, to everywhere else first in the med bay. Um, and then he'll, you know, shine the light back at the curtain and mm. just... It's got that Hello? weird, like, foggy, translucent kind of, uh, texture. <laughs> nice. I mm -hmm. like it. Uh, well, not texture, like material. Yeah. And shining the light through just bouncing some of the light off the walls and stuff like that, you think you can just see someone's lying on that bed. Oh boy. Um, I think, hello? I think there might be tubes as well, or medical devices around that bed too. Oh god, uh... I'm sure this is a HIPAA violation, but oh uh, well. Um, and he kind of like moves up closer to the curtain and kind of reaches out with the flashlight and pulls the curtain just slightly over, kind of draping whoever's on the a table with, with light. And you see, masked up with a couple of tubes running out from a cannula in the arm and stuff is Sven Stackman. Oh, God. Sven. Oh, God, you crazy son of a bitch. What did you do? And he'll he'll kind of move up to, to Sven, you know, just like not really paying attention to what what he sees in, like, in Sven's condition, but just mm -hmm. noticing that it's Sven. Um, so you can see from the way that his sleeves are rolled up that his forearms lying there on, on the bed um, one of them as I say with a cannula and one of the arms um, leading to some fluids that have run dry for possibly days you have no idea it's kind of cl a little clammy or moisture has collected on his skin yeah um, He's breathing very shallowly. And there is a display above you that is flicking various biosigns. Okay. 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 Um, maybe all is not lost. Um, and, uh, you know, Ray just kind of, oh, it pulls out like uh, one of his, his like bottles of water. And, uh, you know, just like looks around for like a cloth or some something uh, to kind of dab it. And he goes over and kind of dabs Finn's forehead and be like, hey, hey, buddy, hey. And just kind of give him a, a little bit of a slap on the cheek. Be like, it's Finn. It's me. It's Raymond. You see one of his hands just twitch. And then 
the rest of the arm starts convulsing slightly, and soon his whole body has gone into a fit as he starts convulsing. Whoa, 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 okay. Whoa, no. Okay, Sh- shit. Um, uh, little uh, alarms start going off in the bio bed, like beep, 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 like various other things. His heart starts pounding. The, the, the pulse indicator starts flicking, flicking up and down, up and down, up and down. As he's, as he's like, he, as he throws his kind of chest and his abdomen forward up into the up into the bed. Oh god, um, yeah, um, shit, man, and I'll, that brag that I had kind of wet, I'll take it and kind of force it in his mouth. Um, sure. As you, you know, you're supposed to, so he doesn't, oh, come on, you can't bite so your tongue out in front of me. Pull back the, the, the face mask that he had on there, um, and his face is kind of swollen a bit, and kind of eyes are actually just about open, he's kind of looking at you as he's kind of like, his weird laboured breathing is sticking in his throat and this is kind of almost heaving up into the bed into this fit his chest suddenly explodes all over you fuck and you look having having pulled back and always kind of like I reckon like um, brought down the curtain um, around you as you gripped onto it you just see this little head just sit up from his chest and and turn its head and look about you it looks like a little naked little snake or uh, it's this horrible little thing and it's covered in his blood as now Sven lies limp on the bed oh, 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 oh god oh, oh. and and Ray just slowly, like he, like you said, I brought the curtain down as I kind of fell on my butt. Mm-hmm. And um, Raymond slowly starts just like backing up away from this thing, but he does not take his eyes off of it as all he sure. can think of is just like, no, no, okay, no, no. It kind, oh, of, f- it kind of clicks at you as it focuses on you. God, next time write a goddamn memo and just and you, I get up and start running towards the door. And you say that as it as it hisses at you. Um where are my chest buster? Here we go. Uh Oh no, it's terrorizing hiss attacked me. Right. Uh okay, it jumps towards you, flashing its razor sharp teeth and hissing malevolently. You must make an immediate panic roll, please. So, let's see what this is, because I've forgotten already. Panic roll. As long as you keep your stress in check, you can use it to your advantage, but tension grows too strong, it can explode, sending you into a wild panic. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, so that's uh, so usually it's when you roll a, a one on any of your stress dice in a skill roll, uh, but you've just been attacked by a strange alien creature you've never seen before. So... Uh, this is it. So roll roll 1d6. Can you do it manually from roll 20 for me? Mm-hmm. I will click 1d6. I rolled a 6. Uh, uh, compare it to uh, your the stress table on the right. Did we put the stress table in here? Panic table. Yes, I did. Congratulations. Uh, so what's the result? 6. Okay. You're keeping it together. You manage to keep your nerves in check, but only barely. Okay. Nice one, uh, Raymond. You roll the amount of stress level, the amount of stress dice you have. So now you want to roll low. Get it? I got it. Uh, so yes, I'm barely keeping my shit together. All right. I'm gonna give you another stress die. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so you now got... I have two. Yeah, yeah. Chuck two on there for me. All right. Uh, yeah, as you rush out of the med bay. Uh, okay. do, do you have any rhyme or reason about where you're going at all? Um, you know, I I really don't. I tell you what, I'm going to roll a D3. Uh, one is back to the galley, two is to the command deck, and three is another direction that I haven't gone yet. Okay. So one, I'm heading back to the galley. Okay. Um, you bump into the table, so, smash into some chairs, knock a uh, another dinner tray, t- TV dinner tray, off the table. Uh huh. Um, but look, you look back and you don't see anything. 
the, the scene is still again just as you as, as you sit as you settle. Okay. Uh, and like I start looking around. Uh, I mean, I mean these people weren't like armed, you know. Like they're not, it's not like they're just space marines or anything. But uh, I'm going to start looking around. I mean, this is a galley. So uh, for anything that I can even resembles a, a weapon that I can carry, like, you know, a knife, uh, a very large fork. Um, sure. You, know, uh, you can grab a knife uh, from the kitchen. Pie server would be good, too. Uh, yes. Yeah. Kind of like a trench. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> sure. No, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna try to find like a like a knife uh, or so, just something. Um, yeah, I mean he's he's shaking all over. Um, but uh, uh, Let's see if a knife is uh, stirred up in here somewhere because they love their pulse rifles, but knives, I don't know. <laughs> um, oh what? Oh yeah, sorry, I did say space marine when I meant colonial marine, but. You know I'm sure I mean. no one will see. Please don't sue. Um. <laughs> well, somebody... <laughs> Unfussable's already like, I don't think ex exterminators is a thing. No. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I mean, they, they don't have any stats that I can find for little stabby implements. So let's just say it's uh, one damage. Yeah. Because they're they're just based with, uh, and then there there is usually a bonus to um, what you roll. Uh, I'm gonna give it a plus one. Already. Uh, so the damage rating is how many points of damage your target suffers. If you roll any extra successes, you can deal additional damage. The range is obviously going to be within reach. Doesn't weigh very much at all, and that's all. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, yes. Uh. So, heading back to the galley, um, mostly to find, you know, he's just it's the nearest place he could think of to to find something to stab. Hmm. Um. But once he gets his wits about him, um, I think a. Uh, Raymond's going to head back to the command deck. He got the comms to work once. Maybe he can get a, a message out. Um, but if not, maybe he can get that door shut. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and. Uh, I, okay, no. It's, 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 the door can shut. That thing's small. It can't open doors. Okay, yeah. No, no, no. Let's, let's do this. Uh, and uh, I'm going to try to move back towards the command deck. Um, using my flashlight more for instead of having it on all the time, since there are some lights. Um, but, you know, shining a, a big beacon around all the time can't can't be a good thing. So, uh, yeah, he'll he'll slowly start making his way back towards the the command deck proper. Sure. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Come here, Mom. Protect me. <laughs> All right. Um, was your aim just to close the door, primarily? Uh, yes, I want it because I'm just thinking that's the closest place uh, to get where I can close a door. Sure. Um, and yeah. Even though I pried it open, that means I can pry it closed. So yeah, that's uh, that's my goal. All right, roll me a heavy machinery check. But I don't have the thing now. <laughs> what the the the, the duba? Uh, yeah, because I thought you could only use that for one roll. That was a med kit. Oh, so the oh, so the maintenance jack is a permanent item. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I conflated those two. So that's a plus one on heavy machine. I'm just going to change my heavy machinery to one so I can yeah, really go feel on. cool. There you go. Submit. 
Uh, okay. That okay. result on the stress die, I'm thinking that you think you see something, like, uh -huh. scuttle in the corridor. Just, just, you're really, it's really tough. You're really trying hard uh -huh. to get this properly locked, and then you see something, mm -hmm. you're just like, no, 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 and you're no. just pushing, like, yeah. Ah. Not today, Shots. Satan. Yeah, yeah not today. <laughs> and yeah, I uh, get the door open, get inside, and immediately go to shut it. Um, yeah. You are a, for all that you know, alone now. As you just um, hear just the faint beeping of screens and consoles. And just um, for his own peace of mind, starts looking around the the bridge and like making sure there's because uh, you know he doesn't know the, the all the ins and outs of the ship um well i don't know i did have that really good role earlier when i was checking all the are there any other ways in and out of the bridge as far as main the only other door you've got is to mother mainframe okay and that's an internal it's an internal component so we should be good we should be safe Yes, okay. Um, God damn it, Sven. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go back over to the comm, mm -hmm. which is still open. <laughs> and just like hit the button and just be like, uh, this is Raymond Cross uh, 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 from the... Uh, uh, I can't read my own writing. What is it, the Dionys? Deimos. Danos? Is it Deimos? Deimos, yeah. Oh, like the like the moon for Mars, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Um, no, monkey, don't get to get up there. It's my comm channel. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is Raymond Cross for the Deimos. Uh, uh, I, I'm a member of the ICC. There's something on the ship. We crash landed on a moon on a. On a, on, a, on a gas giant, a Jovian moon. Um, d d d there's something here. It, it, it burst. It burst. It burst out of the pilot's chest and attacked me. I know what this sounds like, but this is real. We need help. We need help. There are still some pods, some colonists alive in their pods for the time being, and Mother won't give me access! And, um, I'm a little bit at my wits' end, so, um, I hope somebody can hear this and can get here. Um, gonna keep the comm line open just in case we bounce back. I'm, I'm on the bridge, just sitting here. And he just kind of like sits back. Um, and he's just probably going to phase out for a minute as hmm. all of this just kind of washes over him. Um, um, fuck. Okay. Wait a minute. And he goes back and uh, he wants to check those radiation numbers again. Sure. So having a look, as I said, um, it's not an immediately deadly dose of radiation, but it will essentially make you violently ill, and then the body will shut down probably within a few days. Um... <laughs> Checking the cameras and some of the just the internal kind of logs mm -hmm. as you hack your way through some of the systems. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at this point, he's just. I'm trying to find anything that I'm that's not locked down. Yeah. Um. It registers that the radiation suits. Um that were contained uh, just like in a, a like a closet space in like a section of the of the galley corridors that would house some of that equipment 
uh, have been taken out. Um, but there are two remaining suits. Oh. Okay. Um, in the galley. Okay. Shit. Shit, 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 shit. Um, uh, immediately start looking for any kind of like, uh, do I have any access to like open and closed doors or is, or is everything powered down anywhere up here in the kind of the command module? Yeah, I think you would know that in order to start actually affecting those kind of um, more uniform changes, they can't be done from a console here. But the only place they really can be done from is the mother mainframe. All right. I'm going to go over to the mother mainframe door and just see it's, you know, he's expecting it to be locked, but he'll try to see if it is, or maybe fate is on his side. Yeah. Which it doesn't seem to be today. Um, this door does have some power still left remaining. Mm -hmm. And it says in very plain letters above the touch, uh, touch screen access panel that uh, access to the mother mainframe is uh, only authorized to the captain. Thanks, Mom. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, okay. Back to the galley. At least it'll give me some protection. Um, shit. Okay. Um, and yeah, he he summons the nerve to actually open the door again uh, because, you know, waiting in here to die of radiation in a few days doesn't really sit well. So, uh, okay, okay. Um, so he gets his, you know, flashlight in one hand, knife in the other, and gets the door, like pries the door back open uh, and begins making his way with some haste to the uh, back to the galley wherever where it said that the uh, radiation suits are are housed sure um, so they're in kind of a, a cabinet storage space uh, built into the wall of the corridor itself and next to them are the security officers mm -hmm. okay and that's where they're housed uh, yeah, just inside. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, is there a door to the security office, or is it just kind of a, like a walkthrough passage? There is. This one's more of a kind of, um, I'm imagining, you know, again, like the slightly kind of opaque, translucent kind of frosting on the door. A bit like mm -hmm. a PI's office, but it's all the way down. So it's got this yeah. kind of metal frame all around it. A bit like our frames on the overlay. They got this like metal frame all the way around. It's kind of like opaque thing. And it's got some of the, like the Wayland yutani kind of imaging mm -hmm. uh, impressioned onto the door. But it's got like security office. Okay. Oh, okay. And yeah, and it kind of like just dawns on him. Like, it's like, oh, God. I want a weapon. Damn it. And so he starts realizing the security office might be a good place to find an actual weapon. Mm -hmm. instead of the kitchen knife that he kind of looks down at pitifully. Um, but uh, yeah, he moves over to the door to try to mm. open it. Uh, I mean, surprisingly, the door it can be accessed here. Um, it can be slide, slide op uh, slid open. Okay, so he like takes one another look around the galley right quick uh, and slides the door open and kind of flashes the light around inside the security office first uh, before going in. Um, but yeah. yeah, basically try to do that as quickly as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool, yeah. Um, uh, did you want to try stealth out? Or mm. just kind of doing it quickly? 
Uh, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm actually trying to be a little stealthy. Yes. Uh, so what would that be? Uh... Go ahead and roll it. Um, I, th I thought it was stealth. Might be wrong. Uh, it's mobility. It's mobility. Okay, good. <sighs> would you like to push it? Mm, uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna push it real good. Here we go. We're gonna All push right. it once. So that's a stress die. So I get a stress die from that? Uh, not immediately, but you will after this test. But you re-roll all of those dice, basically. <laughs> so nothing. Oof. Uh, add that third stress die to your sheet as uh, well. Yeah, it is there. <laughs> all right. Um, so you open the door and you clatter over... Um, like, I mean, they're actually helpful pieces. I reckon, like uh, magazines, ammo casings, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, clipboards. Um, there's like an ornament down here as well. Um, almost like a kind of globe or something that's been smashed onto the floor. Um, which is kind of what you trip up over all this stuff and creates like a clattering out into the corridor behind you. Okay. Would you, As a reaction, would you kind of close the door or anything like that? Oh, no, I would immediately slide the door shut and mm. actually turn my flashlight off for like a few seconds. I mean, is there any other light in the room at all? Like even like emergency lighting? It's completely dark. Mm. Okay. Uh, I, I instead... Okay. I don't turn the flashlight off. I just kind of press it into my leg. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Like just the lens of it onto my leg. So it kind of covers most of the lighting, uh, any light kind of heading towards the door, but maybe leaves just like a sliver of light across the back of the room. Mm -hmm. So that there is something, uh, cause I'm not ready to be in the complete dark yet. Um, but seeing some clipboards, uh, he does find a, a, a like a, a, a grain of sanity. It's like, Oh, maybe there's, Maybe there's like a manifest of, of all the weapons in here. I don't know. Just like <laughs> trying to find some cold, hard data to, to get his brain back online. Sure. Um, I mean, if you want to spend a little bit of time here, I will let you um, rest and uh, you can knock off one of those stress die. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take a minute uh, to just kind of go, go through the room uh, nice and easy and look around I mean, the first thing, of course, I want to find the radiation suits, you know, get into that and then look for a better weapon than I currently have. Sure. All right. So uh, take off that stress off from your sheet. I've done it on the overlay. And then you come down gonna... back down to two. Yeah. You are going to get literally using the props here, mate. Shotgun. Yes. Literally the best. All right. Uh, so if you want to add this to your sheet on weapons down below. All right. Uh, so the bonus is plus two. So that's you'll roll two more dice with this. Okay. On your ranged combat checks. Um, its damage is three, which is pretty meaty. Okay. Range is short. So it has to be up fairly close to, for it to be really effective. Uh-huh. Uh, but its kind of property is armor doubled. So I imagine that I roll double my armor dice. Because it's more like a shrapnel -y effect, isn't it? Rather than yeah. a proper piercing yeah. kind of yeah, damage it's a, thing. It's a, it's a blast. Yeah, unless you had some like special like armor piercing slugs, which this probably doesn't. Because you don't want that on a ship. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You don't want something going through the um, hole. But... Interestingly, everything else has been taken. Um, and they would have had a small armory in here. Mm -hmm. They'd have signed things out. In fact, paperwork jockey here. Um, the... They have the proper receipts for everybody, for all the weapons? Mm. Okay. They all signed out their firearms. 
Uh, that's Ooh. that's everyone from the security chief, Kanjin, through to Dela Cruz, Moore, Ashford, Howell, Colbert. They all signed their weapons out at one point or another. Um, I'm going to cross-reference the, the sheet here. Was this shotgun spins? Uh, he wouldn't have had a weapon assigned to him. Oh, oh, okay. The shotgun is more of an absolute last resort type thing. And it's maybe probably, an, thinking about what you've seen, it's maybe a bit of an oversight on somebody. But they've done this in a rush. Okay. Because it's taken a while for you to find that shotgun. It's not in the kind of just racked up and everything. It's like, yeah, the shotgun is actually underneath the desk. Ah, mm -hmm. okay. This, well, yeah, this it, wasn't registered. Okay, well, he's gonna, he's gonna. I mean, he, uh, you know, him and his dad went hunting a, a few times. Uh, you know, he's not not anything like a survivalist or anything, but you know, yeah, they 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 did their thing. So he so, at least knows how to load a normal shotgun. Nice, cool. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah for sure, for sure. You've got ammo as well for here for this. Um, you've got one reload. Um, basically, I think it's if you roll a a one on the stress die. I think you run out of ammo. Yeah, you. Like uh, thing. Yeah, there's a thing where it's like you waste all your ammo if you panic. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, all right. Yeah. So, checking my notes again. So. Both Dela Cruz and Ashford signed their weapons out uh, sometime, because I can't really be specific exactly with the timing, but sometime before basically all of the other security staff did. Interesting. Okay. And Ashford was the security officer, right? Okay. So that's very interesting. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm basically gonna finish putting uh, the radiation suit on and load the shotgun back up after I've checked all the ammo and, and all that. Um, and like looking at the, the security room again, does it look like. Um, I mean, are there are there any like signs of like leftover like ration packs or like med packs or you anything like that in here? Nothing or is it up. just no. Okay. Mm -hmm. So weird. And I haven't seen signs of like shell casings anywhere, right? Like used weapons. No. Oh, they got loaded up, but when did they use them? Um, damn it. All right. <clears throat> Feeling a little bit bolder now that he has a, a, a big ass shotgun in his hands. Um, does, um, oh, by the way, the radiation suit, does it have a, an external light? Anything like that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't know if I was going to need to, like, hold a flashlight and a shotgun. Um, <laughs> no, but yeah, before we leave, we basically have like the desk jockey version of the suit up scene in Commando where it's like pen, pencil, ruler, <laughs> radiation suit, <laughs> shotgun shells in, you know, yeah. flashlight in the pocket. Yeah. Um, puts on some chapstick because his lips are dry and uh, hydrate some more. And yeah. uh Okay. Now We've had an excellent scene. suggestion from chat, which is tape the flashlight to the shotgun. Well, okay, yeah, we yeah. So yeah, I'll I'll, I'll tape the flashlight to the top of the shotgun. Uh, there you go. Just for a little bit of a, a nudge to the uh, 
<laughs> to the movies. Yeah. Um, and um, <clears throat> he's seen the med bay. He's seen the galley. He's seen the security room. He's been on the bridge. But um, he said engineering is just below. Uh, well, now that he has a radiation suit on, um, he should be okay for at least a minute or so. So uh, he'll he'll he, he wants to try to find somebody or the evidence of somebody, and uh, so he's gonna he's gonna step out and and start heading uh, towards engineering. Um, sure. You head around the corridor, and to get to engineering is always a ladder drop down. Um, you get to the hatch, and the hatch is closed. It's powered. And as you shine your torch down onto it, you hear Mother say again, The engineering deck has been locked down on the orders of Captain Arnold. I'm just, just, I'm just having a look around, Mother. Don't worry. Just want to make sure. Just looking for... Any signs of life? I'm sorry, Raymond. But the engineering deck has been locked off on the orders of Captain Arnold. That, that point point taken. Um, does the door still look powered? Mm-hmm. Hmm. He kind of, like, looks at the door frame, and uh, does it just have, like, a comm panel? On the side. Sure. Yeah. He kind of like looks down at his shotgun and looks at the comm panel. He's like, <laughs> probably won't work. Hmm. Yeah. And he, <laughs> and he, um, he's going to try to uh, input uh, the pilot's code to see if. You know, just seeing if he can maybe gain access, uh, you know, using another crew member. Uh, so, Romy, Romy Comtech. Okay. I'll back down to two stress. Submit. Oh, so that is three successes. Nice. All right. Uh, what kind of stunts do you want to perform as well? So, yeah, you, you managed to, cr like, hack it open, essentially. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, I mean, the stunt I would like to have happen is, if possible, um, you know, I don't know if it's just this door, but I don't have to hack this door again. It's open. Like, yeah, I can just yeah. pass through it. I don't know how if that extends to other doors on the command deck, but let's say you can do all like all the doors in in engineering you know this code works you've got this little like okay so at least i can move around secret passcode done yeah you can move okay. around the engineering deck now yeah. all right good all right and uh so yeah once i input that and psh, the door is open i'm just like you know holding the shotgun not quite right it's not you know <laughs> nice and dug into the shoulder it's maybe right below you know so the first shot will be kind of weird and awkward, but uh, he's holding the shotgun in front of him, shining the light down the corridor. Sure. Um, so you shine the light down the ladder. Uh, and it's a tighter fit than the um, even the access was to uh, the colony bay. Okay. Oh, God. All right. Um, and... Uh, yeah, does the shotgun have a strap? Or not? Um, yeah, for sure. Okay, well then I'll go ahead and shoulder shoulder that and uh, begin climbing down. Uh, taking care, now that he's in a suit, you know, it's a little bit more difficult. It's a bit loud, sorry. Uh-oh. No. The music, cha the music changed. The music changes. <laughs> I've played enough video games to know what this means. Uh, you slowly climb down that ladder, clink, 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 echoing out into the darkness. As you... So once you leave like that kind of tube 
there's a clear clear bit of ladder underneath you um, and it's actually like you've now dropped down into like an expansive area so there's big bits of machinery um, on each side uh, all that kind of stuff but it's much freer now this is the least claustrophobic you probably felt here now um, and there is that kind of like quintessential sci-fi like blue glow coming from like one corner of the uh, engineering deck mm -hmm. uh, do you stop kind of halfway down the ladder as it expands around you or do you keep heading down uh, no I would probably I mean if I have like a light on my helmet uh, and I can actually move it around uh, I would uh, I would look around uh, before I got down there just to see anything Sure. Um, in the immediate vicinity, you're pretty clear. But then you look over towards where the like the glow is coming from, and also towards the large access doors to the life support like systems. And again, you can see big, big blood smears on the floor. Clear evidence where someone has dragged a couple of bodies. Um, at least. But I imagine the ceiling here is a good, like, uh, 15 foot mm -hmm. tall. It's like a good size, tall engineering bay area. Almost kind of doubling cargo bay as well, kind of thing. Okay. Um. <clears throat> I will... This... I'll go ahead and get at least to the bottom of the ladder just so I can get the shotgun off my shoulder and just kind of use it to look around the room a little bit better and give a little more light. Um, sure. I mean, the beam of the torch doesn't go all that way. Right. Definitely not the, you know, um, good kind of like uh, 200 feet kind of distance. That you've got to the to the to the kind of end of the bay, and then you've got the life support kind of door. Okay. Um, well, then, yeah, I'm gonna start making my way towards that, whatever that is. Because you, yeah, you said it's like a life support bay, right? Yeah. 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 I'll I'll at least go check that out. Okay. Because if you know, maybe that code will work on that. Sure. Um, but yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll meticulously like pick my way through just like yeah, yeah. looking around you head towards the life support bay door and it's uh, like a double door sized uh, not heavy blast doors but just kind of larger area double door size and you head up to it and it's basically uh, kind of been crumpled uh, been damaged so it is a part and you could squeeze through. Uh, bef before I try that, I'm going to look at at where it's crumpled. What does it look like um, crumpled? It Does it look like, you know, like the maintenance jack that I have? Um, like a tool? No, this looks like something really, really bumped into it. And not only that, there are some kind of like scratching marks and there are also pockets of, um, like, melted away um, just around the frame of where the doors would meet the seam. Mm. So if something's kind of... As if, like, a, like a welding tool, maybe, had, like, melted parts yeah, of that yeah. in. Interesting. <sighs> well, um... Can't get much worse. <laughs> you could always keep a straight face. <laughs> Damn it! I really That's wanted good. to for that line. That's good. Um, and uh, yeah, he's he's still. I mean, he's looking for anyone. Um, and and so he's he's gonna go ahead and kind of look through the uh, the separation. Okay. 
as you shine your torch through, you see really large white dust particles just floating in a dark-ish room with green hue to it as these big algae tanks are cycling air and water through them and are lit by that. And just looking through, you also see what you don't expect from a life support system. There is this webbing, this kind of sticky biological netting like wrapped up around these algae tanks on the far wall. Um, I mean, I wonder if maybe something like leaked out. Like, I mean, there's all kinds of liquid oxygen. I don't know. It's, and he kind of like looks at it just very oddly and he remembers where he is and it's like, uh, damn it. <laughs> Go on, we got time. Go on. I know. I'm just, I hate myself right now for, for laughing at this moment. And I, I look around. I mean, this is life support and engineering. So, you know, you should be careful what I shoot at. Most things in here wouldn't react too well to bullets. So, um, yeah, I, I'm going to kind of look around and just kind of <laughs> shine the light on each side of the tanks and just like, Captain? Anyone? Like kind of for the first time, just kind of call out. Mm. No one answers, but you do see a slight bit of movement from this webbing. swore it just moved. Um, and he just kind of points, like, he just kind of froze with the flashlight pointed at the webbing. And he's, uh, it's one of those stuck between fight and flight, um, like deer in the headlight moments. And he kind of snaps out of it, uh, it's like okay, um, no, no, okay. I uh, no, no, okay, no, uh, uh-uh, uh, no, no, and I'd start backing back towards the door with the crack in it. Um, and he kind of like turns back and looks, and you know, probably sees more of the claw marks, and. Mm. You do, and as you look up, something uncurls from above you. This long black shape, this tail flicking in the darkness, as this long head starts to descend down from the ceiling, dripping from its face, its strange eyeless form judging you, seeming to look at you now. Oh. <laughs> Did you miss your deadly grab? <laughs> no, I'm about what... to attack with my deadly grab. Oh, I thought the zero meant that you missed. Oh god. No, no, no. It's a random table, mate. That's what I was saying about they have the, they have the random. Oh, that's right. Yeah, no, I'm remembering this now. Is Okay, that's a success. Uh so one damage. Um I'm going to say the your suit has an armor of uh, one, so roll me one d6. If you get a, if you get a six, you absorb that damage. Okay, so take a hit for me. Um, it immediately grabs you from the floor up. Its claws digging into the suit, digging into the sides of your body as it climbs back up the ceiling of the life support room. 
your shotgun is dropped to the floor. That's in the text, okay. man. <laughs> and you got to no, no. make me a panic roll. Oh, well. Uh, so roll d6 for me. It's just one and we'll, d6, right? And we'll add the two, we'll add the two uh, stress die to that. Five. So you're bizarrely keeping it together, but only just. Okay. Don't know how the <laughs> fuck that's happening. Um, okay. As it's literally got you just hanging from the ceiling, you're like, like hanging freely as it's like clutched you. Uh huh. And it's like, hold, just be with one arm now as it's grabbed onto the ceiling. Uh, what would you like to try and do? Uh, I mean. I, I mean, I dropped the shotgun and I'm just like probably just screaming in a blind panic. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe that's just like what's actually keeping me focused is is having the proper reaction to the current situation. Sure. And I just reach down to my belt, you know, where I pull that the knife out and just kind of stab at it. And, you know, just like that. Okay. It's just a, a blind reaction. Sure. Uh, so roll me uh, close combat. This will be good, mate. Two, two, <laughs> two damage. Now I just roll my uh, armor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Which I'm sure that'll just be fine. Sure, that's sure. Fine. everything's fine here. Okay, absorb, we're all fine. I absorb both of those. Uh huh. <laughs> it's, it's eight damage. So, uh, eight armor. Sorry. Um, all right. As you're like trying to slice at it, um, I, if you don't mind, I want to show off this mechanic. Go for it. As this, as this bit, I think we can all kind of have figured out now what's gonna what's gonna really happen by the end of this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this acid splash, as you stab into it, um, it takes some superficial damage, but bits of its like green, gloopy blood almost seem to drop onto your suit. Burn into your thigh. Ah! Uh, oof. Uh, take four damage. Well, I mean, I'm dead. Well, okay. I mean, I have armor, right? Well, roll the or one armor. What? So not did not absorb it. That's, that's not the the. It's not the roll I was looking for. Are you broken at this point? So you're on zero. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I I took one last time. I only had two health left. So okay, cool. Uh, so what we're going to do now is critical injury time. Bloop. You have a broken hand. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I stab at this thing, and some acid splashes on my hand, and yeah, that makes sense. So the the, the fizzing goes into your into your wrist, and it cripples your hand. Uh, so that uh, you can't use the hand. At least That's it's not my writing hand. Damn it! Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, all right, I, what's next for Raymond? I mean, I don't, I don't really, uh, I don't really know what. I mean, I would. He probably just kind of grab at that, at the maybe the maintenance jack. You know, I assume it's just kind of like a. Yeah, like a yeah, crowbar yeah, 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 yeah. kind of thing, right? Or yeah, he's—I mean, he's just grabbing at whatever he can with his free hand and just like trying to bat at the one arm that's hanging onto him, just trying to yeah. break the, trying to break the grasp. Okay, uh, so let's let's roll opposed, and it's basically this is like a uh, trying to get free grapple check thingy. Uh huh. I believe it's mobility. Let let, let me double check. Let me double check. Blocking's different. Solution. Let me just search for the grapple here. Ah, grappling. Uh, okay. Um, wins an opposed close combat roll. Oh, joy. <laughs> My finest step. Uh... Which I'm not sure if they can do because I literally don't have any other dice in anything else besides mobility and observation. I mean, it, it's about right. They just sit there and they move around and then they kill. So, mm. 
Uh, okay, roll me a close combat check. If you succeed, you can drop down. Uh, I got it? nothing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna push it. Yes, of course I'm going to push it. Uh, right, reroll this. So here we go. I got one success. Ooh. All right. So you I'm beat this arm. Stress. Beat this arm. Beat this arm. And then <laughs> finally it like cracks, and you are let go as you fall to the to the ground. There is a crunch. It's a good you know ten feet down, but okay. You are still conscious. Uh, okay. Uh, well, um... Hmm. I'm gonna roll a d3. If I roll a 1, that means I actually remember to try to grab at the shotgun before trying to scramble through the opening and get out of here. Okay. I do remember to actually, like, <laughs> maybe land right near the shotgun, so with my good hand, just kind of prop it up on my bad arm and just, like, start wiggling towards that, uh, because I was right at the door. Yeah. Uh, so I start trying to move, looking up, like, you know, and if it's near me, I'm going to try to shoot it, but I'm basically trying to get out of there. Sure. All right. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll give you a shot here. Yeah, I'll give you a shot. So ranged combat. Roll that for I'm me. Sure, I'm sure this will... With the plus two, I think. Oh, so just put a two in modifiers? Uh, Yeah. Uh, holy crap. So, two... Uh, so it's three, four damage in total with the, with the extra stunt, if you want to do that. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, so can the stunt be me, like, ducking out, like, just kind of, like, shooting as I'm jumping through the, uh... Sure. Okay. I'll let you do that. Uh, but I am going to roll my armor now, and I rolled double. Oh, God. Because it's the shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, how much? So I like to keep this thing around for close encounters. <laughs> nice. Uh, right. right. So four damage. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Cool. Uh, all right. It's turn. capture for the hive as it slinks it darts almost elegantly through the open doorway to the life support room uh, as monk meows at it yeah, yeah monk, monk's like it's trying to feed and I want to be fed uh, it's going to do base damage of one two three damage to you <laughs> Uh, the Zeno uh -huh. pulls its punch so that only one point of its damage is inflicted. So, okay, you take one damage. But the paralyzing venom takes effect. Roll me a stamina roll. Okay. Do I roll my d6 for my armor to see if that damage is negated? Or is that still a thing? Uh, I'm going to say it's sure? not here. I've, I've rolled three successes. So I think I'd, I'd, I'd basically be like, no, it manages to puncture it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With two okay, more of those. so uh, I'm rolling stamina. This is how long you stay conscious. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna push it because I'm. <laughs> do it, man. Do it. I have the the will of an accountant to finish inventory. That's my drive right oh my now. My God. Holy crap! Fucking hell! All right. So four, <laughs> four stress die after this. Uh huh. Uh, okay, so three turns. Um, okay. What's next for Raymond? What? Okay, where's where's the nearest panel? Nearest panel is like to the side of the doorway of the life support room. Like uh, that's actually like a like, like in front of you, but usable panel be beyond the, <laughs> beyond the alien. Um, oh, on the other side of the alien. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shit, never mind. Um, but there is one. There's going to be one around some of the like machinery and stuff in in uh -huh. this in this kind of cargo bay area. But now you've got this this whole 
body, this whole silhouette in kind of like a bit of strobe lighting from the from the fluorescent mm-hmm. tubes above. Um, you can see this thing, and it's like you know, like seven foot tall, like tail longer, swishing behind it. It's kind of weird exoskeleton, kind of black ooze body. Yeah. No. Um, <clears throat> well, I you know I, I this thing is like right on top of me. I still have the shotgun, so I mean. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna basically like Sarah Connor this shit and just, <laughs> just like, like, like as I'm like backing away screaming. Um, maybe uh, I don't, I don't know what I'd scream. Uh, I know exactly what I would scream. Go on. <laughs> Get away from me, you bitch! <laughs> and just like <laughs> ratchet off another shot. Yeah. Go um, on. All right. Let's fucking... Wait, I get a two modifier. Yeah, because it's a shotgun. Yeah, I got a success. I can't believe you haven't rolled any ones yet. Shh, it's a, Sam. Sam, just like we don't even need to bring that up to the universe. We don't. <laughs> All right, well that's a success. So no stunts, but you do three damage, and I'll roll my armor. Ah, I didn't want to do that. Come on, stop it. Come on. Ah, so I absorb one of that. So it's another two. This might say you know. Uh, and that, my friend, is another acid splash. Oh god! As it's as it's this acid sprays onto you. Um, oh, and how much damage did he take? One. Two. Two. He absorbed one. Oh yeah. Uh, so I'll roll another two of these. So let me try and uh, just roll a quick tour. I'll just roll ranged quickly. Because it should have also had a bonus equal to your damage. Oh, oh joy. What's helpful? Well, that didn't work at all. Uh, there we go. So another damage. So uh, okay. th- three damage. So another critical injury. Oh God. Crippling pain as you as writhe. I start screaming and writhing in agony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that's panic. Where are we? Critical injuries. Uh, where is it? Crippling pain. Oh, number 13. Stress level increases one step. Okay, I'm up to five. <laughs> How far can this... Uh, it's me to go. That's what I wonder. Well, uh, if I get one more action, it's <laughs> we'll see. All right, one more. Let's do one more action, and then and then you are because you are starting to like you're in intense pain, and you're uh-huh. starting to cramp up through the paralysis that's creeping up your your midsection. Yeah. yeah. So I um <clears throat> I ratchet the shotgun one more time as this thing's writhing in front of me, and uh, and I just look this thing right in its eyes you know in its face you know and uh i i i don't bring the shotgun up i just look at it and go i ain't going out like sven and the shotgun just pulls back and i pull the trigger and yourself yeah i uh, yeah no i i off myself like yeah. i'm not i'm not i'm not going to have something bust out of my chest yeah for sure and and that's yeah. Boom. Done. We will learn what has happened to you when we do part two of our two shot for this. Well, I mean, sometimes it takes three shots, but you finally found the right target. <laughs> That was some good hits, man, as well. That was ridiculous. Oh, my God. That is where we will wrap things up. <laughs> like, seriously, my hands are, like, like cramping. Because I'm, like, so, like, tense oh, right now. <laughs> Ooh. Stress level five, man. Yeah. Got up to stress five. Anyway. Yeah. GG. There we are. <laughs> That was so F's for, awesome. F's for Mr. Cross. Oh, uh, yeah. F's in chat, boys. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs>
you gotta know when to hold them. <laughs> know when to fold them. Anyway. Um, oh, man. That's your, that's your brief cover of The Gambler by Kenny Thanks, Rogers. man. Thanks. Uh, but, man. I'm here, I'm here to entertain. Yeah, totally. But, man, I have got some juicy fucking fruits for, for the second session. You've given me some awesome shit to work with, man. Because mm-hmm. they're going to find out what happened to you. Yeah, and hopefully I'll, to the crew if they can figure it out. Yeah, I uh, I can't wait to see. Uh, I will definitely be <laughs> tuning in. But you know what? You, you, gave, you gave me that buddy, and I was like, I have these moments when I'm writing. You can ask my after the fire guys um, when I'm like, oh, I could do that thing. Oh no, maybe that's <laughs> too much. No, I definitely do the thing. Mate, you gave me that little buddy. You gave me Sven Stackman. I was like, he's a chess popper. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's the way. Of course, it wouldn't be my rival, the doctor. No. 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 Has to be my boy. <laughs> no. So anyway, I think the doctor was in the. Uh, anyway. We'll have to wait that, and see. That might we? be find out later. But mm. thank you so much for such an awesome session and for uh, popping my alien cherry for the game because that was super fucking fun. Hey, you know it's. Uh... It's it's it, it's 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 my pleasure. I I've only played this system once, and I died in that one too. Um, I was the secret uh, android, uh, uh, or no no, I was the secret corporate spy in that one. So, so we we rolled or we chose, didn't we? I think the the corporate agent from the character creation, and like you mm-hmm. you were telling me, but when we did it, when we generated, you were genuinely worried people would think that you were just spying on on stuff that you were going to cover everything up. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, anybody who has seen me play in the two Alien games I have played before now, I was the secret, I was the, I was the android in the first one that totally turned on everyone, and then in the second one, I was the secret corporate spy that turned on people, and so, (laughs) I was just like, well, let's play a corporate guy, because the people automatically assume that I'm the a-hole, and, uh, you know, but instead, I don't know if anybody noticed, but I was basically, my whole inspiration for this was Jack Ryan in space. He's yeah. just an analyst. He found some discrepancies, and they were like, "Well, you get to go figure it out this time on the ship yourself." And so, uh, yeah. Next time, Ray, write a goddamn memo. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't quite get it to play, but we got it there. Perfect. Oh, man. I slipped it in there one twice. It's fine. There we go, it's... man. There we go. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. I honestly can't thank you enough. That was super fucking cool. I am I am living more for these one-on-one sessions because they are just so like intense in a cool way. Mm-hmm. So well, cool. it's 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 one of those things where um, I at least I you're not having to worry about anyone else's improv, right? No, right. And so when it's just one player in the in the world, the GM, it's you can just kind of build up a, a, a rhythm and a momentum to it. Um, yeah. Now, of course, you know, having a full party, there's there's magic that happens there. Uh, yeah. The more uh, diverse uh, the you know opinions are, but. You don't get this this deep dig into a character, and um, yeah. So I hey, I, I appreciate you having me on for this. I, I was worried at the beginning, and about ten minutes in, that all just went out the window. So uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm super stoked uh, to see how this uh, all turns out. Me too, man. Thank you so much. Um, just quick messages then from me. If you want to follow what I do, um, then check out our social media stuff, and obviously like and subscribe to the channel um will this will be up as a vod before we do our second session of the two shot we'll do uh the next session will be an all female or mb cast uh that we're still just uh, finishing up the finalizing the actual cast themselves uh but they will be the investigation team looking into what happened to the demos mm. and looking what happened into raymond cross um yeah thanks so much for it uh you can catch me around at rpg webby around various places uh Matifius is distributing the rpg but this has been lovingly made under license by 20th century fox by free league the wicked little game i'll probably do like a, a bit of a kind of pseudo unboxing or a little kind of a flick through through some of it because checking out the pdf has been fine and lovely and it's a greatly beautifully designed book as they always are but actually looking at it in print like they've got it just right like they've got the colors and everything just right and i i do get nerdy for that kind of thing 
now that I'm working mm-hmm. with it. <laughs> so oh, it, yeah. it's just got that old alien look to it, you know, good harking back to the to the uh, original films and stuff. It was super, super fucking cool. Uh, Pro, just one last shout out from you, man. Where can we find you? What are you up to? Anything we should look out for? Oh, most definitely. Uh, once again, I'm Pro One Half of Web DM. Uh, I co host with Jim Davis on Wednesdays. Um, uh, trying to remember what our show on Wednesday is about. Uh, I'm going blank though, and I'm I'm bad. Otherwise, I'll give you all a little preview. But oh well. Um, cool. <clears throat> you can check our shows out on uh, YouTube on Wednesdays, um, and uh, you know we're going to come back with some more gaming on our Twitch channel. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to be at PAX Unplugged here, uh, flying out Thursday, heading for Philadelphia. So yes. look forward to seeing a lot of you uh, beautiful faces out there. Susie G, I can't wait to see you. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I will not be one of those faces. I am oh, sad. Come on, come on, Sam. You gotta, you gotta pop over the pond. Nah, the boss, the boss and his wife are going. So if you see Chris, uh, say hi oh, yeah. to him for me at the booth. Uh, but there will be a Modifius booth. Hopefully, they'll awesome. be somewhere near Free League as well. So if you see the Free League guys and girls there, then check them out and oh, I will say de- hi I'll for drop, me. I will definitely drop by for sure. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, this was like I said, this was awesome. Uh, holy crap. Uh, so much fun. I can't wait to see how it all turns out with the investigative team. Um, yeah. But yeah, from uh, from here in, uh, in in the heart of Texas, uh, I say bye. Bye, Monk. What a beautiful thing to end on. See you, friends. Yeah. Check us out in our second session. Bye-bye.